Hi, today we're going to go over the chemistry first semester final exam practice test. The first question, what is the density of a sample that has a mass of 0 0.590 grams and a volume of 6 cubic centimeters? We know that density is equal to the mass divided by the volume, so it's going to be equal to 0 0.590 five nine zero grams divided by the volume of six point zero zero centimeters cubed point five nine zero divided by six gives us a number that looks like this zero point nine eight pardon me zero point zero nine eight three three and so on on our calculator question says use correct scientific notation. So the first thing that we have to do is look at how many significant figures we have. We have three significant figures here and three significant figures here. So we'll need to have three significant figures in our answer. That will be these three right here. We also need to convert it to scientific notation. We'll have to move the decimal point one, two places to the right. So our answer should be 9.83 times 10 to the minus 2 units or grams per cubic centimeter and so this is our correct answer B. The second question says which of the following properties of ethanol is a chemical property? Color is a physical property, boiling point is a physical property, and density is a physical property. The only one left which can be a chemical property is the flammability because when something burns that's a chemical reaction. Question number three says in a classroom demonstration a teacher pours sulfuric acid on some granulated sugar in a beaker. The sugar turns yellow and then black. Smoke rises and a strong smell is released. This demonstration is an example of what type of chemical change. Well these two are freebies. There was no electricity or magnetism involved. This question is just to see if you know the difference between chemical and physical changes. It was clearly not a physical change because there was burning, there was a color change, there was smoke. All of those things indicate that it must have been a chemical change. Question number four says the balanced equation represents a reaction that yields sodium chloride. We have sodium hydroxide plus hydrochloric acid yields sodium chloride and water. This is a neutralization reaction or an acid-base reaction. HCl hydrochloric acid is the acid, sodium hydroxide is the base, and they always re yield a salt and water. What is the total number of grams of H2O produced when 116 grams of NaCl is formed? So this is a stoichiometry question. The first thing that we need to do is write down our basis, which is 116 grams of NaCl. Now, since we can't look at any conversion between NaCl and water without first converting to moles, we need to get the molar mass of NaCl. We can do that by adding the molar mass of Na, which is 22.990, to the molar mass of Cl, which when I look on my periodic table, I see is 35.453. When I add these together, I get 58.443. So I put that in here, 58.443. And the units are grams of NaCl per mole of NaCl. It's a big C. And these units cancel. So now I'm in moles of NaCl. Now I need my mole ratio and I see that up here 
there's one mole of NaCl for every one mole of water. And the question asked me about grams of water, so I'm going to put water on top. One mole of H2O for every one mole of NaCl. Now I've gotten rid of NaCl and I'm strictly in terms of water. The last thing I need to do is multiply by the molar mass of water. And that is about 18 grams of H2O for every mole of H2O. Now all I need to do is carry out my multiplication and division. 116 grams divided by 58.443 grams. I can skip this one, but to be honest, it's 1 over 1. 1 mole divided by 1 mole. That's just the unit conversion. And the last thing that we're going to do is multiply by the 18 grams that we have for the molar mass of water. And we end up with a number about 35.7 grams of H2O. We look at our choices here. 35.7 um, will round to 36. So this must be our answer. 36 grams of water. Number five says the chemical equation below is correctly balanced. Four aluminums plus three oxygen yields two aluminum oxides. How many moles of aluminum oxide will be formed when 27 grams of aluminum completely uh, reacts completely with oxygen? So let's start with our given 27 grams of aluminum. This again is a stoichiometry question even though we're not going all the way to grams in our answer it's asking us about moles. We have to get to moles first so the first thing we need to do is find out how much a mole of aluminum weighs. We do that by looking at our periodic table. Our periodic table we can see that a mole of aluminum weighs 26.982 grams. That's really close to essentially one mole, uh, or pardon me, the 27 grams is close to uh, 26.982. Now we need a mole ratio. So we started with a molar mass. Now we have a mole ratio. And that's the ratio of what we want, Al2O3, to what we're given, Al. When we look at our periodic, or pardon me, at our balanced chemical equation, we have two moles of Al2O3 for every four moles of aluminum. If we carry this equation out, 27 divided by a very close to 27 is 1, times 2 over 4, that's a half. 1 times a half. is a half. So we get 0 0.50 moles of aluminum. So the answer is B.